Okay, I've been asked to do a video. I'm not very good at these things, so you'll have to bear with me. I'll try not to bore you too much. Um, but I've been asked a whole lot of questions, and so I promised I would try and make some kind of video and answer some of them for you. So, um, let's get going. Okay, so I bought an M3. I've had a 335 beforehand. And why did I buy an M3? I bought an M3 primarily because whilst the 335 was really good, I wanted something with a little bit more fun to it. And I thought the M3 would be a good compromise rather than keeping the M3 335 and getting something a bit more sporty because the chances are I'd never get a time to use it. So um, I ordered the M3 without the competition package originally. Um, I had the uh, Santorini, uh, San Marino Blue um, and a fair few extras. And then in February this year, um, I went and saw the dealership when I found out about the competition package and I changed my order to that, which delayed it by another three months. Um, but six, seven months after originally ordering, I finally got the San Marino Blue competition back. So, uh, competition pack differences. First thing, wheels, the 666s, um, which have split opinion completely. Some people like them, some people don't. I personally love them. I think if you haven't seen them in the flesh, I think you should do because they look way, way better in the flesh than they do in the pictures. Um, the pictures, you lose that third dimension, um, which you do get when you see them in the flesh. They're gonna be an absolute sod to clean, but um, I'm on my way now to go and get the car detailed, so I'm not too worried about that, because hopefully that should help. Um, so, yeah, do try and see them if you can. Some people think they look too big. I don't, I think they look absolutely perfect, but then perhaps I'm biased. But I did actually buy some uh, black 437 second hand, so if I didn't really like them when they arrived, then at least I could change them over and put these up for storage until I sold the car back again. Power. Uh, to be honest, there's no difference that I can tell yet, but then I'm only 700 miles into running in, so I really wouldn't see any difference. Um, it's, it's not enough to make any discernible difference to anybody, and I can't believe anybody will be able to tell an extra 15 horsepower. Uh, but we'll wait and see, but I, I really can't think it's the difference between a well-running engine and a not-so-well-running engine, so I very much doubt it. Exhaust. Right. Exhaust. Well, we've kind of established now that the back box isn't different, it's exactly the same as the standard back box. Um, the big difference being the flap control. When you start this car up in um, when it's warm, it actually opens the flaps completely, which it doesn't on the standard car, and that gives it a much nicer start-up noise. Also, it seems that it would open the flaps partially as well, uh, whilst you're driving the car in efficient mode. Um, which would explain why it's a deeper noise. Um, but I know on the forums people have said, they've, well, one person said, Paul, he's taken it apart and he's seen that it's exactly the same as a standard one. So that would all make sense. But what it leads to is it leads to something that sounds so much better from my point of view. I mean, I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm inefficient at the moment. It's not desperately loud. Uh, yes, you can hear when I put my foot down a bit, but it's not overly ridiculous. If I go into sport, then um, you then start to get burbles on the overrun and you start to hear it an awful lot more. And I really like it, actually. And it's interesting that the ASD in this, I just don't think is anywhere near as evident as it was in the, um, it was in the standard car. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't see it anywhere near as, hear it anywhere near as much. It doesn't sound anywhere near as, artificial I don't know if that makes sense but this now it sounds like a nice straight six rather than sounding like a computer game um, which is nice when you come from the um, 335 which had the ASD on in it wasn't really it was okay but to be honest it just sounded like a computer game this doesn't this actually sounds like a proper engine and I think that the 
um, competition package again. I'm sure that they've changed ASD slightly. It just, there's a lot more noise from the back now, which wasn't there, I'm sure, in the M3s that I've tested uh, before. I'm sure this is different. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a winner for the competition package on that front. And the burbles, if I can try and see if I can get them. Ah, it's hard to actually do them. It's hard to do the burbles. Uh, <laughs> they never ever come when you want them to, but uh, certainly on the overrun you do get certain burbles. I mean, it's not like changing the exhaust and changing the downpipes where I'm sure you get loads of pops and bangs, but it's quite addictive and when you're going through the villages and things, um, yeah, it brings out the child in you, no question about it. So that is the exhaust. Now, I've got the uh, CG precision thing fitted at the moment. Um, I'm in two minds over it, in all honesty, because uh, I like the pops and bangs on the sport, and I think that it makes enough noise when it needs to. Um, and in efficient, I like it nice and quiet. However, I will admit that the fact is that if you put it in and on, then you find that in the Sport Plus, you get um, a lot more low down noise. Because um, I, as I understand it, the, the, um, the valves can close on some occasions, even in Sport Plus, which this certainly isn't doing now. Um, but uh, you know what, if you haven't ordered one, don't feel heartbroken about it because I really don't think there's an enormous amount of difference. Um, I know people say there is, but I think that's because there's a difference in the programming of the flaps for the competition package, which means they're open an awful lot more than they are in the standard car. So standard car, fine, competition package, I just don't really see the point in it. But, you know, each to their own. One thing I do like is, is when you back off about three and a half thousand, you get the almighty crack from the back, um, which I remember getting with the AC Schnitzer car. Um, it's quite addictive. So that's that one covered. And then on to the next one. Seats, okay, seats, right. I don't know what anybody's worried about. I really don't. Everybody who's complaining uh, about the fact they've got no lumbar support. Seriously, they have got lumbar support in them. It's just not a variable lumbar support. And I was really worried about it when I first got in the car, but I found them comfortable, but I was worried that after a few hours, it wouldn't be that way. It's fine, it's absolutely fine. I've put my seat so it's back a bit, um, so my bum sort of sits into the back of the seat more. And I did seven hours in the car on Tuesday, not a problem at all, got out as fresh as a daisy at the end of it all. So unless you really have to have massive amounts of lumbar support, don't worry about it. It's not an issue, it really, really isn't an issue. The seats are incredibly comfortable. Um, they're quite hugging and if you've um, enjoyed life a little bit around the midriff like I have, yeah, they're, they're tight but they're not uncomfortable at all. And obviously you've got the electronic side bolster. Uh, my shoulders are quite wide, but then you never sit right back in them anyway, so I don't think that's an issue. Um, as for the holes, well, you know, the kids are obviously going to use those to play and put their toes through, um, but, you know, they're, they're fine. You can't feel the holes are there. Um, heated seats work exactly the same as normal heated seats, so don't worry about that. That's not going to make any difference at all. Um, you either like them or you don't. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, and I actually like the two-tone that you get with the Silverstone with the black um, in the holes. I, I like the way they've done it, it's really nice. So that's seats. Belts, well, yes, you've got these spangly wonderful belts. Um, I'm really not that fussed at all. Some people seem really, really struck with them. Um, some people even going to the point of wanting to order them on their normal cars. Well, great, okay, fine, no problems at all. <laughs> Makes no difference to me, um, I, yeah. They're, 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 they're rather natty, but I certainly wouldn't have paid extra for them um, if I had to. Um, so, there, seats, belts, handling, right, handling, far more important for me, handling. The standard car, 
I thought the model year 16 car massively improved on the earlier M3s, which um, I felt in comfort, they were wallowy, I felt in sport, they were compromised, they never, there was no perfect um, mode to have them into, if you put them into the sport, then you found there was, the dampers just gave you no give whatsoever, and you found you were hopping on things, combine that with the traction and with the diff that seemed somewhat on off on off all the time it made it an incredibly hard car to drive quickly and not really desperately enjoyable even if it was dramatic it wasn't that fun um, and that's actually what stopped me from buying an m3 in the first place and it wasn't actually until i drove the acs one that i decided that that could be sorted by having decent suspension and that was literally when i ordered one since then i've driven the model year 16 car and we know that's got new dampers on the rear um, and it had revised software they said it happened for the competition package but um, there was no question it happened for the model year 16 cars they're very much better behaved um, and they've brought it along in a normally uh, enormous way actually to be honest as far as i'm concerned and so what's the difference with the cp the difference for me is the following look first of all let, let's get this ride business out of the way. Um, the ride is absolutely fine. Riding comfort is better than a lot of cars I know, um, namely the Mini at the office. It's bloody awful compared to this. So don't let that put you off at all. Um, it is, yes, firm, but it's controlled. And at no point would you call it jarring or desperately uncomfortable. So don't let that put you off in the slightest. It's fine. Um, now, comfort is surprisingly good for a lot of the time I'm I'm going to put it into comfort now now I'm just going over the downs at the moment it's not a desperately bumpy road um, but nevertheless I think it soaks it up really well the only time you notice there is any issues with the uh, damping on the comfort mode is when you get to a fast undulation and then you can start to feel a certain amount of wallow. But other than that, it's pretty good. And actually, do you know what? For 80% of driving, it's more than enough. Um, it's only when you want to go that little bit more that you can find flaws in it. So then you switch to Sport, which has good and bad points. Um, the uh, In Sport, start you can start to feel those little nuggets uh, of bumps a little bit more the upside is is that you then control those undulations a lot better it does control them it clamps them down a bit the downside is that if you go onto really rough stuff or bumpy stuff you can hop the wheels you, you can feel that they're losing contact with the road um, so if it's not a great surface, I'd rather live with a little bit of the wallow and probably stick with comfort. Um, fast undulating roads, sport is absolutely fine. And it works really, really well, actually. Um, sport Plus, I haven't even bothered with. I wouldn't even bother on the road because sport is as far as I'd ever want to go anyway. So Sport Plus, no, I'll leave that for the track. Now, the... Um, the diff and the traction control. Let's traction control first of all. Traction control on this is brilliant. Um, it was very good actually on the model year 16 car. Basically, you it doesn't back off in the same way as it used to. It used to be a case of whenever you used to put your foot down, the traction control would come on, it would light like a Christmas tree and cut everything and then suddenly try and apply it. It was just not very nice indeed. Now, it's not what I would call totally dry outside, it's a slightly damp road, and even now I can apply power in a way that I just couldn't have done so before. You do get a little bit of intervention every now and then, but it's not trying to cut off immediately, it's trying to help you a lot more, and that's the whole thing, it feels like it's trying to help you rather than hinder you, um, which is how it felt with the old, old car. And it makes a huge difference because it allows you. I mean, I know understand why people were using MDM before because they just got fed up with the traction control always coming in. And I can understand that. Um, with this, you feel that you don't have to keep 
leaning on the MTM quite as much because actually the traction control isn't intervening in the same way as it used to, which makes it far more drivable. And so as you can sort of kind of tell, comfort suspension, traction control on now is a far more effective way of getting from A to B quickly, quite safely, um, than it ever was before, which is good because obviously there's quite a few people coming out of four-wheel drive cars, front-wheel drive cars into these. Um, and you're not tempted to turn the MDM on and try and explore things when you don't really understand the car a bit. So they're really, really good. Um, MDM modes, I've only really just started using it. I started using it yesterday and it's an absolute pussycat in MDM mode. It's very, very progressive. Um, those little times when the traction control does start to back off, they just disappear. They'll either disappear into slip, but it's amazing how you can feel the car slipping and then you start to feel the diff locking and actually transferring that grip onto both wheels together and you just get that traction back again. It's, it's really good. I mean, I'm in second now and it is slightly damp and I'm gonna put my foot down. And it's, it's great. I mean, it is just, there, there is loads of traction there. Um, I, I'm super impressed with MDM and I would leave it on by default on M2, except for the fact my wife's gonna drive this car. And I would rather I leave it on and I'll just press it as and when I want to. Um, but the MDM on this is really, really good. Um, in fact, you know, the whole drivetrain on this just seems so much better than the standard cars did then the 16. I mean, to be honest, if you've got a standard model year 16 car, I'm not convinced there will be an awful lot of difference in terms of that because I'm still pretty sure that they all got the same settings. It's just that BMW never actually said as such or admitted as such. Um, well, we'll never know. We'll never know. But I would say that if you have a model 16 car, you needn't worry too much. Now, the MDM, it won't allow... I, I remember with the original cars, people saying that they could spin it with the MDM on. This won't allow you any kind of slip angle at lower speeds uh, with the MDM on. You've got to turn the traction off for that to happen. Um, which is probably quite a good thing for most people. Um, but I seem to remember with the original MTM that you could get some slip angle at lower speeds. With this, I can't seem to at all. So again, you know what? This is a fast road car for me. Um, I am gonna take on the track. When I take it on the track, I shall turn everything off. But whilst it's on the road, actually having the ability to be able to get from A to B See, that's foot flat down, MDM. You can feel the rear moving around a little bit when it starts to lock up the diff to ensure the power goes down. But, I mean, it is slightly damp outside and I am not going desperately slowly. And it's, it's just brilliant. Um, I've got no other words for it. I mean, it is just such a different car compared to the original one and if you think coming out of your 335D that you're going to be absolutely stuffed because you can't get any power down then seriously I would like to see you try and well you know I mean I'm on a public road so I'm not going to go Bertie but um, yeah, you, you'd be pushing to try and keep up because uh, it really is that good. Um, and the noise, we love the noise. Now, fuel consumption, uh, another thing that people ask me about. I started off on 17 to the gallon the day I picked the car up, primarily because I was doing this most of the time and I wasn't doing anything apart from just putting my foot down. It's, um, yeah, it'll gobble up fuel if you start using the engine, which is understandable. And I wasn't, I didn't buy this for economy. I bought it to have fun. However, having said that, oh, that was a nice pop. 
having said that, I was hugely impressed on Tuesday. I managed 27 to the gallon, um, and that was a mixture of cross-country thrash in the morning, and then uh, a fair amount of motorway work while I was just switching revs going up and down. So, on a long journey, it is definitely possible to get into high 20s. Uh, my average yesterday was uh, 24, I think. Um, now, during this little piece here, I reset it when I filled up this morning. I've got, I'm on three quarters of a tank at the moment. Uh, and when I left the garage, when I started talking to you, I was on 24. I'm now on 19.9. So, you know, uh, <laughs> if you start putting your foot down, you will start using the jungle juice up. Um, but, you know, you're not gonna drive like this all the time. So, don't worry. It's not gonna be quite that bad all the time. Um, so, I hope that answers everything. If you are, if you're worried about ordering the CP package, the ride being too firm, uh, don't. It's absolutely fine. This is Devil's Dyke Road and it is hardly what I would call smooth. And even on the bumpy bits, I mean I'm just slightly short shifting, it's absolutely fine. You know, there's no problems with it. getting traction. Absolutely no problems at all. So don't worry about it. You'd be amazed how much traction these things can get out of them. You don't have to have X drive to be able to do that. Um, so fuel consumption, up to you how you drive it. If you drive it like you stole it, you'll be in the mid-teens. If you drive it every day normally and have a bit of fun every now and then, you're looking around 25, 25, you know, 25 to uh, mid, mid to high 20s, I suppose. Um, seats, absolutely fine. Wheels, they're entirely up to you. They're your choice. Um, I really like them. I don't see any problem with it whatsoever. Exhaust-wise, don't feel you have to get a third-party exhaust if you don't want to. I'm very happy with this at the moment. I don't like having too loud of an exhaust because I'm kind of conspicuous if I want to go quickly. I don't want to make too much noise. And this one still sounds plenty loud enough and it still bangs and cracks a little bit. So don't worry about it. Um, CG controller, up to you, but I actually think for this it's just kind of a bit pointless. Um, I wouldn't bother with it. I'm gonna leave mine on simply because I've already put it on now and so there's not really much point in, in getting rid of it. But um, do you know what? I can't see why you'd really want it. Not with the competition package. Perhaps with the standard car, but not with the competition package. I can't see there's going to be much need for it. So, I hope that answers everything. Um, you can kind of hear the noise. I hope a little bit. I don't know how it's coming across. I mean, I'm in sport plus sport. Ah, oh, steering. Did I mention steering? I can't remember. Steering, comfort, comfort, comfort and comfort. Um, anything else is just too bloody heavy. I don't know why they bothered with putting such heavy steering on it. I could have had a lighter one than this, which would have been nice for commuting and going on the motorway, and then this would have done very nicely for sport, and I still wouldn't have used Sport Plus. It's just too bloody heavy, and you can't feel things, uh, which you can with um, the Sport. So, my advice, stick with comfort, um, unless you want stupidly heavy steering. Um, I've got my M2 set in Sport Plus um, for the um, throttle. I can't see the point in Sport at all. Um, I have Efficient and I have Sport Plus. Um, I just think Sport is just a middle ground that I don't really need to be honest. You know, I either want to take it nice and easy, Efficient's fine for me, or I want to basically drive a little bit quicker and Sport Plus is fine. Dampers, Comfort and Sport, the only two I use. Mostly Comfort, I've got Sport on at the moment because uh, I know this road and actually it helps a bit because it's got a few undulations on it. 
but you've just got to be a little bit careful when you go over these humps, especially because you can get the back to move a little bit, so you've just got to treat it with a bit of respect. But it's still amazing what it's soaking up and letting you put down, which certainly wasn't possible with the old car. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, and just so you know, I've just done all of that in MTM, and the roads, I mean, it's, it's raining because I've got the wipers on. Um, it is quite damp. So bear in mind, that's a slightly damp, greasy road now because it's been dry for a bit. So uh, you know what? You can do an awful lot with these cars. So anybody who's sli slightly terrified and apprehensive, <coughs> don't be. They're really, really good cars. I love mine to pieces, especially now the wing mirror is fixed. So I hope that's been useful. And if you've got any questions, give me a shout and I'll try and do anything. This is off to the detailers now for the weekend, so I can get it all nice and pretty. And then, as I say, if you want anything else, just let me know and I will film it for you. Cheers.